So most SOLIDWORKS users are familiar with the use of convert entities. This is a tool which lets you begin a new sketch, select geometry from a different area of the model, and then project that geometry through the model onto your new sketch. So for example, I was able to take the geometry from this lug and project it straight forward here right across the model onto this new sketch plane. Now I could take that geometry and choose to extrude it, giving me a second instance of that lug. If I were to go back and maybe change some of the geometry of the original lug, like if I were to change the diameter of this hole here from 10 millimeters to 12 millimeters, we see here that this lug over on this side has updated. But did you know that there is functionality built into SOLIDWORKS where you can actually establish quantum entanglement between multiple sketches. And what I mean by that is if I go back to this original sketch 12 here and I choose to edit this sketch and maybe add some additional geometry, like add a couple of additional contours here to this original sketch, what we'll see is that that geometry does not get projected across to this newly created lug that we use convert entities for, but it does automatically show up here on this lug, on this lug, and on this lug down here. And this functionality is what's known as a derived sketch in SOLIDWORKS. And this is the kind of advanced part design functionality we talk about in my training class, P102 Advanced SW Part Design. And we're actually teaching this class a little later this month. So if you're interested in learning more about lofts and sweeps and guide curves and projected curves and patterns, well, this would be a great class to sign up for. And a lot of times, if you talk to your manager about this, your company will actually pick up the cost of the class. So if you're interested in learning more about advanced part modeling, be sure to visit us over at twotalltoby.com slash training. You could sign up for that class, maybe even sign up for some other classes. All right, so how does Derive Sketch work? Well, Derive Sketch works by going into the pull down menu, insert, Derived Sketch, insert, Derived Sketch. You can see it here, but you can see that it's grayed out. Well, the only way Derived Sketch will become available to SOLIDWORKS users is if they start out by pre-selecting the correct geometry. And that geometry is a sketch from the model, like I'll choose this sketch 12 here, hold control, and then select a plane or a planar face. So I'm gonna choose this planar face here, let go of control, and now I can go into the command insert derived sketch. When I choose the command insert derive sketch, an exact copy of sketch 12 is created, but this copy works a little different from a standard sketch. One of the things that you'll notice right away is that there's no options to create new sketch geometry. So I can't make a new line or a new circle or a new rectangle here in this derive sketch. The only thing I can do is create relationships and dimensions to locate this derived sketch. So for example, I could create a coincident relationship here to this edge. And now we'll see that the derived sketch can move and it can also rotate. I could create a collinear relationship here to the derived sketch along this edge. So now the derived sketch is only able to translate. And then I could add a dimension here, maybe from this edge to the derived sketch to finalize the location of that sketch. And once I add in those dimensions, the sketch becomes black or fully constrained. Now I could take that geometry and maybe choose to extrude it or cut extrude it, depending on what I'm trying to do. And now if I were to go back to the original sketch and make any changes to the original sketch, so let's say I get rid of these three circles here, well, once I exit and rebuild, we're gonna see that those changes are propagated to all of the instances of the derived sketch. And this can be very useful when you're doing something like this, like a lug, where maybe if the diameter of this circle needs to decrease, let's say we needed to bring that down to six millimeters. Well, we wanna see that all throughout the model. We wanna see that six millimeters here. We wanna see it here. We wanna see it here. We wanna see it anywhere that lug is being used. Or maybe if the overall geometry of that lug were to change, like instead of this being a continuous circle, let's say that we were to create it with an opening up top here. We'll just kind of trim out this geometry and of course normally i would fully define this but now we can see that when we exit that sketch that geometry that we've now changed on that original sketch is propagated throughout the model to all of the derived sketches 
So this is pretty versatile because it doesn't need to be a projected sketch where, you know, it needs to be perfectly in line with the original. This one over here is on a totally different sketch plane. This one down here is on an angle, a totally different location. And yet we're still able to use that derived sketch throughout the model. And we know that anything we do to the original sketch will automatically show up in all of those derived sketches. Now, one other place that I like to use this is when I'm creating loft profiles, because here what I could do is I could say this very first profile, profile one, should be the same at the start and at the end. So I'll pick that sketch, hold control, pick this sketch plane here, let go of control and insert derived sketch. Now, all I need to do is locate this derived sketch. So I'll create a Pierce relationship here. Pierce is something else that we learn about in the advanced part modeling class. And maybe I'll take this line here and make it parallel or collinear to this line here. And there we go. Now that sketch is fully constrained. And I'm gonna do the same thing here with this second profile into this third sketch plane. So I'll take the second profile, hold control, select this third sketch plane, let go of control, insert derived sketch. And so now once again, I can lock this thing down just by using relationships and dimensions to lock it down. So we'll do a Pierce constraint here. We'll take this line and maybe this line back here and make them collinear or parallel. And there we go. Now that sketch is fully constrained and now we can perform a solid loft. So we'll loft from this profile to this profile to this profile to this profile. And we'll add a couple of guide curves here, guide curve one, guide curve two. And when we're done, what we're going to see is that if we go back to our loft and change maybe our very first profile, let's change this from 60 down to 30. Well, we're happy to see that the profile not only changes there on profile one, but also changes here on this derived profile. Or if we were to go to profile two and maybe increase this to 65, well, once again, we see that not only does profile two change, but also this third profile changes because of that quantum entanglement of that derived sketch. So this is something that is very useful when you're doing sweeping and lofting. And if you want to learn more about sweeping and lofting, you can sign up for our training class a little later this month. It's at twotalltoby.com slash training to sign up and to register for that class. And of course, if you enjoyed this video about derived sketches and quantum entanglement, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and of course, come back for some more power moves.